How's it going guys? My name is Tavarish and I hope you guys are having an awesome weekend. I definitely am. This is going to be the garage update and it is definitely an update. I've been really hard at work at this car. You guys probably haven't seen too many videos come out just because there's a lot of really minute details, really kind of laborious work. But let's go over what I did and then let's go over what just happened today, which makes me, well, I, I just can't stop smiling. So first off, if you guys are new to this channel and you don't know what this car is all about, then check the link below or click up here to see the playlist for my 2008 Lamborghini Gallardo Spider. I'm not gonna go over it too much, but there's a lot of work that went into this car. So if we take a look over here, we have the finished trunk section. And right here you can see the JRZ RS Pro coilovers. And I just have a battery box on here just to make sure that the battery doesn't die. This battery was dying for some reason uh, after it was left uh, off, so I'm not sure what that is. Maybe I need a new battery, but right now I'm reconditioning the battery and then just making, it, making sure that it has a charge. Now coming back around here, we see that there is a wiring nightmare here, except for the fact that it's not exactly a nightmare anymore. I was working the entire day yesterday trying to get all the wires basically tucked. The way Lamborghini does it is they stuff all the wires in there and hopefully something doesn't short. And uh, I decided to make sure that nothing is gonna short specifically because I have a lot of aftermarket components. We have the aftermarket ECU. We have the Cyvex S12 right here. We have the wiring harness that goes not only over there, but it also goes over here. And this goes, it loops and all that stuff. So I made sure that this is tucked and nothing is fouling on anything. Nothing will short. Uh, I used this sort of grip uh, cotton tape it's almost like electrical tape, but it's meant for these close corners things where you can just basically stuff this thing anywhere and it's not going to uh, rub off. And I'm not sure if that sounded exactly correct, but that's what it does. So I did a lot of rewiring as well. I actually had to lengthen some of the harness so I can run it underneath this pillar because the way it was ran, I had the throttle body harness. It's actually a separate harness from the engine. Throttle body harness goes above the seat belt and every time I move the seat belt it would rub on the harness so I had to actually go into the pillar lengthen the harness about uh, about 10 inches and then connect it to my uh, S12 ECU and uh, hopefully that all works I also have the ground situation right here make sure that all the grounds are very clean there and there and also right here and that is gonna be it for the wiring section. Uh, I do have to do a little bit more wiring as far as the front lift. There is a sub harness. I believe the sub harness is somewhere around here. Yeah, so that there's a sub harness and that plugs into uh, the front. So I have to run that underneath. After that, I'm gonna put on the uh, finisher piece. Actually before that, I have to change out the seatbelt because that seatbelt has a tear in it and I have a brand new seatbelt, but that is also, it's not very exciting and it's just really monotonous work. The exciting part is that I have figured out nearly all of my problems. Those impossible problems that I told you about, the impossible problems leading from this, this multiplexer that I got that was supposed to connect my computer to my car and allowing me to uh, basically talk to all the ECUs and reset them and stuff. This wasn't working and I was at my wits end trying to figure out how to get everything working. A really, really useful, awesome dude named Matt Eakins from Canada sent me out his personal multiplexer. And this is the original one. This is an OEM, not OEM, but uh, this is a Actia Basic XS. And this is exactly, exactly what I need. This is what the uh, manual calls for. And it's not a Chinese recreation. This is the real deal. And he also made his own cable. This is a D sub connector. And then he pinned it specifically for the Gallardo. And uh, that goes into here. It's basically an OBD2 port. And then on the other end, there is a serial port. And that serial port, uh, I'm just using a generic serial to USB adapter, which works perfectly fine. And I had to get a new computer. And that new computer is actually quite old. Uh, <laughs> the computer is a $50 Craigslist laptop. And it's not even, <laughs> it's not even widescreen. Check this out. 
So here is the Lara system and it can actually connect to everything in the car. Well, everything other than the ECU because the ECU is not stock. But this is a huge, huge step. I mean, I already reset the airbag light and the airbag light would be the only thing keeping me from having this car inspected at the salvage inspection. So basically right now, if I were just to button everything up, I could actually get this thing registered and on the road, but I wanna make sure that everything is working. So in the next episodes coming up, I'm going to be diagnosing the electric roof and then we're gonna be fixing it because this thing is gonna be working 100%. I cannot wait. Thank you so much, Matt. And thank you so much to all the other people that sent out their multiplexers. I actually have a few more on the way. Uh, this is gonna be really good. So I should have a permanent solution for all this. And not only this Lamborghini, but if I get any new Lamborghini, Lamborghinis in the future, well, new to me, old to Lamborghini, if I get any new Lambos in the future, I'll be able to do anything I want to them because now I have the dealer software. Now, if we come around back, we'll see that I'm actually missing the tray. This top is just resting on the engine, which is not good, but I'm not turning on the engine. So I did mention that before I had a little bit of a gas smell coming from the engine bay area, and I was really concerned because these things love to catch on fire especially when there's a gas leak. So I did a little bit of sleuthing and I found out you can buy a UV dye that you can put in gas, oil, and everything, and uh, you can basically see it under a black light. Here is where I put it. I just put it in the gas tank. I'm just going to uh, take this off, and maybe you guys can see with the black light, but I have this cool little black flashlight right there. And you can see that yellow right there. Uh, that is the dye. And if I see yellow anywhere in the engine bay, other than obviously a marker or something, then we know that we have a fuel leak. So if we take a look down here, we'll notice that there's nothing going on in the fuel rail, nothing going on in the actual fuel line. And well, th this, this little yellow right here, that's actually just from the gold. Uh, it's, it's a gold uh, foil that I put on, but there is no leakage at all. There are no leaks anywhere in the system and I checked this after running the car for quite a long time and then I realized that there are a few issues with the fuel line itself. These fuel lines, they're actually subject to odors. Uh, these fuel lines actually have an outgassing uh, symptom. It's not even a problem. Uh, the outgassing happens for the additives of the gas. It's not even the gas itself. So there's no risk of fire. It just smells a little bit like gasoline. So in order to fix this problem and make sure I never have to smell gas again, then I have to redo all the fuel lines with something like an AeroQuip line or something like that. I'm using Russell lines and apparently these are good, but they have an outgassing problem uh, a lot of people have reported so I didn't know that that's something that is completely new to me uh, but apparently that's normal and I'm just really relieved to know that I don't have any fuel leaks at all because that would be very catastrophic now I will change the lines out in the future just so I don't have that smell it, the smell is not so horrible but it is something that I don't want on a car this expensive so if we come around to the back you'll see that I don't have my rear panel or rear bumper but that's okay because it's getting done by Monday and on Monday, we're gonna have the bumper here and then I'm gonna have the exhaust done and then we're also gonna do some welding work on this guy right here, the oil tank. And the oil tank is getting an AN fitting uh, on top of it. Uh, I am going to, uh, to try to include uh, Tony, the welding Jedi, uh, but he's actually been uh, busy with work. Uh, he does have a day job and he's he's just been awesome. Uh, we'll see if we can get him in. If not, then I might be able to do it myself or have some help. So uh, that's gonna be fun in any case. But what we're gonna have to do is with the exhaust, we're definitely gonna have to cut this a little bit further back because I do have new exhaust tips. Let me show you those. All right, take a look at these. Come on, there we go. Look at that. So this is actually gonna go on something like that. And we do have to do some modification and uh, this is gonna be really nice. 
This is not true duels. Uh, it's just kind of one into two, but that's how it was in the stock car. So it just had one big pipe going into two smaller pipes. And I have no problem with that. I'm definitely gonna get flames out of both these pipes. So that's all I really care about. And in addition, I'm thinking about doing something interesting with the color of this. This is the uh, transmission. Now the Lamborghini Sesto Elemento is really cool in that it has this in red, but since I don't really have anything in red and I was thinking I have basically everything in gold, this is just a little bit wrinkly. I'm just gonna uh, redo this in a bit. Uh, I was thinking about having this in gold and this is not really protruding too much but uh it will be visible a little bit and i think having this match this will be uh kind of cool you guys let me know what you think but uh don't be too brutal or be brutal whatever also i am definitely going to be uh, blocking this off this is not the final form of this uh this does introduce some structural rigidity issues so i will be putting a piece of aluminum here a piece of aluminum here gusseting it so it, it's as strong or stronger than it was stock so don't worry about that i'm not actually uh, compromising any structural rigidity i'm also going to be working on the oil return scavenge system and that's going to go underneath here we're just going to have two catch cans and then those catch cans are going to go uh, into a vacuum pump and the pump is just going to pump into that oil tank so it's going to be a really elegant solution it's going to be really simple and uh, hopefully it'll uh, it'll remove that oil burning issue because we are having problems with that turbo right there even though it is brand new so that is it for the lambo i really really want this to be done this week and with this computer issue solved. Honestly, I, I think we can get it done. Uh, I'm, I'm super motivated to do it. Uh, I was, well, you know, it's just been kicking my butt lately, but right now there's, there's an actual end in sight and I can't wait. But I know you guys wanna see some more of my new shop, so let's check that out. All right, this is a really momentous occasion because we have light, ladies and gentlemen, we have light and we have water oh look at that it's almost like this is an actual shop so what am i doing with these cars now first of all if you guys are new to these cars then uh, let me introduce you 95 supra 04 bentley 03 mercedes sl 55 amg and 95 viper and no, this is not Hoovies in some weird time warp. This is a different 95 Viper that also needs a bunch of work and we will be getting to that. So uh, these cars are in various states of disrepair. This one, I'm doing a turbo conversion with a GTE VVTi head. That's gonna be a lot of fun. That's gonna be coming up soon, but I might have some difference of uh, planning in terms of this. This one was supposed to be the first project after the Lambo. I might change that to this because you guys have been really requesting it. And also this doesn't really need as much work as this one does. I mean, this is a running driving car. It doesn't actually need work, but we are gonna do a lot of work as far as modding it. This just needs maintenance, it needs a new engine. So I have sourced a new engine. Actually, you guys told me about it. A guy was parting out his Bentley and uh, we reached a deal and I should be picking up that engine pretty soon. But uh, this doesn't need that much work. And I think this will be a good turnaround because I am gonna sell this after I get it running and uh, driving and making sure that everything on this car runs as good as possible, OEM or better. So this might be before that. You guys let me know if you wanna see that and uh, just you know give me a comment or like or whatever. But uh, that is gonna be coming up in any case. This is also gonna be coming up. This is my SL55 and that's gonna be the manual swap. I have everything necessary for the swap, I believe. And uh, this is gonna require some custom tuning, some custom uh, hacking of the firmware for the ECU. That's gonna be interesting to find out. Hopefully it doesn't take too long. And then we have this guy. So this is the 95 Viper. And other than well, having an engine that just looks so awesome. The engine's actually the best part about it. Uh, the engine and drivetrain and all that stuff is really, really good, but the body just needs a lot of work. So the body is what we're gonna be doing. I might paint it in here, I might paint it somewhere else, but since every panel on this car is removable, I think I'm just gonna take off all the panels, have them painted, and then put them back on, and then this car should be basically ready to go, other than maybe changing out the wheels and tires. So that's also gonna be a quick 
eh, quick-ish build. But uh, my main concern is gonna be this one and this one. But there is an empty spot here. Actually, there's a lot of empty space here, but there's an empty spot here or there or wherever where a Ferrari would go. And that Ferrari is actually being delivered to me next week. And I can't wait. It's gonna be real crispy. It's gonna be real, uh, well, it's gonna be real sooty, but uh, I can't wait. It's gonna sit right here. And uh, I'm gonna go over everything wrong with it in time, I'm gonna do a real good reveal video uh, for that car, even though you guys have seen that car um, on Hoovy's channel and also my channel. So I still have not seen it. That's the first time I'm seeing it. So hopefully you guys can uh, <laughs> share the misery or share the, the awesomeness. And I know I'm showing you an empty space, but this empty space is gonna be filled with lots of Ferrari goodness. Ah, I can't wait. So since this is a garage update video, this is the part of the video where I answer some of your questions. And it's not gonna be any specific questions, but it's gonna be questions that I've gotten from a lot of you. And number one is what's taking so long with Lamborghini? Now, there are a lot of things that go on with this build, with a build like this. Number one, it's a Lamborghini. The Lamborghini mark is particularly difficult to work on just because all the parts are not in stock anywhere. It's not like I can, go, I can go to AutoZone or even a Lamborghini dealer to get those parts. Number two is the fact that my car in particular has everything modified. I mean, the fuel system, the clutch, the engine, the engine itself is modified. It has so many modified components that if I were to do any sort of stock configuration, it would just, it, it wouldn't make sense with the car. I would have to do more work to get it back to stock. Uh, and also, I'm trying to figure stuff out on my own. I don't have any sort of manuals. Uh, the manuals that I do have, they are very, very, well, there's a lack of information there. They're, they're not very good. So the manuals that are out there, they're either incomplete and uh, they're very expensive and I do pay for them, I have paid for them, but uh, again, incomplete and expensive. But I'd like to thank all of you guys for tuning in to all of that nonsense. That, <laughs> that entire build is, is just crazy. I mean, I, I, I love, I love having that car and looking at it and realizing that it's, it's not just me who built that, but it's, but it's all of us, it's us. And it's gonna be us that build all of these cars as well. So uh, that is my answer to that. Now the second question I've been asked a lot is when am I gonna do the subscriber reveal for the Lamborghini? And I'm planning on doing that next month, perhaps on the 13th at Ace Cafe. That's when they're doing their festival of speed meet and uh, hopefully I can meet up there. I think it's around 6 p.m. Uh, and it might be a Monday or a Tuesday. Now if you guys can't make it for, for any reason uh, obviously monday and tuesday uh, if you're not in the area is going to be a little bit hard to do uh, then i will be doing other meetups in the future so don't worry if you missed that one that is okay and again this is all tentative i will let you guys know when the car is done the car is still it's a ways away from from being done but uh i think that's going to be it I'm very excited about the future. I'm very excited about these cars. I'm very excited about the Lambo that will be done because now I have an actual computer solution. I, I am so excited about all of it and I'm excited for you guys to see well, my excitement. There's a lot of excitement going around. So to end this video, if you'd like to contact me, you can do so at the social links down below. And if you'd like to buy one of my shirts, obviously this is not one of my shirts. This is just, it's laundry day, everybody. If you want to buy one of my shirts, you can do so at the Teespring link down below. Every single dollar from profit goes to charity. This month is gonna go to Hurricane Michael Relief and uh, it's gonna, well, it's, it's, a, it's a good cause. So uh, go help them out there and get a cool shirt. So uh, if you'd like to listen to me talk, to my friend, Mr. Andrew Howell, on my podcast, Car Guys Talk, that you can do so at the link below. But until next time, this is me reminding you that with cars like this that all need work, but they will get done, they will get done, you guys need to wrench every day. Thank you.